everybody, and welcome back to this multi-part series where I am making a custom Miata instrument cluster. If you guys remember back to last time, I took apart the original cluster and designed a new one to fit my needs. I did end up having to redesign my instrument cluster front bezel, however. So I modified the design that I came up with last time um, because I ended up finding out that Glowshift does not make a smaller uh, speedometer gauge. So I had to work out a way to fit two of the bigger gauges in here while keeping the three smaller ones. And I did that by simply making them offset from each other. So the top gauges will actually cover up the uh, surrounding ring, the little black bezel on the outside of the smaller gauges. Uh, it won't affect the uh, performance of it at all. It'll still work exactly the same and we're fitting two larger gauges on it, so it will look even cooler than it would have before. But yeah, with that being said, this part is now ready to print. So now with the front bezel uh, printed out, we can go ahead and start assembling things. All right, so I have the two halves uh, printed out of the uh, instrument cluster uh, front bezel that I designed. You can see when you put them together, they line up just about perfectly. Uh, I did sand the uh, surface, uh, the surfaces where they're going to mate up. Uh, something that is really good for uh, adhering ABS plastic, which is what I printed this with. Uh, something that's really good with adhering it together is going to be... Uh, acetone, which is usually sold as nail polish remover, and something that's really good at uh, applying it is just Q-tips. Uh, so it's going to be as simple as, well, first off, you're going to want to make sure that these surfaces are nice and sanded, nice and flat, and uh, on both sides they are. I actually should make sure uh, that this acetone will not damage the desk, because I would hate to uh, glue it to the desk, that would not be good. No, it's not making the desk tacky, so I should be good. I believe this is a uh, high density polyethylene that I'm working on, which a acetone will not attack. So you have a very short working time with acetone, so you have to be quick. So you want it to just barely stick. All right, it just barely stuck a little bit, and then we're gonna go over it on the top with more, just through capillary action. It'll kind of get drawn down into that little channel that's created by the two pieces. Something that's a good thing to be in the habit of doing is keeping all of your ABS scraps uh, from 3D printing projects uh, for use with stuff like this. So I'm just going to break off a little piece and use it kind of to fill that gap. Just enough to get both sides bonded to it. These ones are close enough that I think I might be able to swing it. The top one will likely need some more work. Might need to clamp it because they don't top one looks like it might have warped ever so slightly, uh, so that might need a little bit of filler in there, but that should not be a problem. Let's get this nice and coated. This stuff flashes off pretty quickly, so it doesn't take a ton of time. It does take a little while for it to set up, though, fully, um, so you might need to leave it overnight uh, before it's fully workable. It helps a surprising amount if you just blow on it, actually, uh, just to get it to flash off. Now that it's bonded a little bit down here, I'm going to go ahead and cut off uh, this little bit of extra material here. cuts very easily because the plastic's softened um, by the acetone. See, it's sticking together pretty good. See, we did make a little bit of a mess here on the table. Um, but we could actually put this to the side. Let it set up a little bit more. Focus on this. So 
the idea behind this whole project is that uh, there's going to be a plate here uh, that the gauges are going to be sitting in. Uh, originally, I was planning on reusing uh, the original black front bezel, um, but after playing around a little bit, I found that I'm not going to be able to do that. And this is actually smaller than this, as you can see. So, what am I going to do about that? Well, I took, took it upon myself to uh, get the dimensions off of the original front bezel, and I created just a flat plane, and then I punched holes in it that line up with those. They're slightly bigger, the holes in the new panel, uh, so that they won't interfere with that. And there's a little bit of wiggle room in there. Uh, but yeah, I designed that, and I already printed it. So uh, let me get that on for you. There it is. Uh, so I already sanded it and uh, fused it together with the acetone method, as you could see. Um, but you could see there is all of the uh, has all of the holes in it, has everything uh, that we're going to need for this. And you can see if we put this on it, everything lines up really nicely. Takes a little bit of fiddling to get everything perfectly aligned, but look at that. Has the support up here in the center, uh, which was something I was a little bit worried about. It has all the support that it's going to need. It's not going to be flimsy. It's nice because it uses uh, the factory mounting spots that the uh, original used. So yeah, I think that'll work quite nicely. So now the idea is uh, getting this bonded to the uh, lower level of the front bezel. Uh, so I'm going to have to sand the bottom of this, which is still pretty delicate. Uh, before I sand the bottom, I think I'm gonna take it upon myself to bond it a little bit better in the back here. Just to make sure there's no chance of this falling apart uh, while we're assembling it. Put this on top. Kind of line it up the best that we can. Make sure everything is straight. There's no sort of interference from anything. So that looks perfect there. I designed this with pretty tight tolerances. There's a little bit of wiggle room, but there's not a ton. So I'm going to just go around and start tacking it in place, kind of like if I was welding it. Uh, but I'm just going to just kind of dab some acetone here and there all the way around it, just to start getting it to set up a little bit. Acetone is fairly thin in terms of liquids, um, has a very low surface tension, so you just need a little tiny bit and uh, it'll kind of suck its way under in between the tight space formed between the two pieces. So now with any luck, this should be fused to it, which if you look, it is. It's that simple. Uh, so now we can actually turn it over and work on the back, which you can see there's a lot more uh, little areas that I can get acetone in back here so that it really sticks. So uh, now with the two pieces uh, mated together, you can see we have them fused pretty good. The piece is very rigid. It's not going to come apart now. I have it adhered all the way around, made a mess of my table, um, but you can see that it uh, should just click right in. Which it does. Uses the factory uh, mounting holes there, and it's in there now. As you can see, there's all kinds of like supports and uh, like the little screens for when there was uh, lights in there. You can see, especially in here, I'm not going to be able to get anything in there. So what we're going to need to do now is remove not all of it. I'd like to leave some of it just as support. Um, but we're going to have to remove a fair bit of the material that's in here so that our new gauges don't interfere uh, with any of the stuff under this. So I'm going to start out from the left and work my way to the right. Um, so right off the bat, I can see that 
this piece here needs to go. So I'm gonna try and just use some uh, little snips. See how brittle this plastic is. I might be able to just get away with that. Oh yeah, that went flying. That cuts it pretty nicely. Uh, let's see how well it works on uh, this piece right here. So we'll just soften this up. See how, oh yeah, so a big chunk of that's gonna need to come out. This feels kind of wrong, because this is like, this cluster was like a working cluster and now we're just tearing it apart, but too far into it now to just be like, no. Aha, didn't go flying that time. Looks about good now. Uh, so now we could go ahead and test fit. I only have two of the gauges right now. Uh, I'm working with Glow Shift uh, to get the other ones. Um, and I don't have those ones yet, but I do have all of the lights. I have two gauges. So uh, we could go ahead and test fit those now. All right, so here is the front bezel with all of the indicator lights installed into it and two of the gauges. Here's the wide band and the uh, tachometer. Uh, you can see, none of the wiring is done yet. A <laughs> little bit of a mess back there. It'll be even more of a mess once all five of the cages have their uh, harnesses hooked up. But yeah, this is getting me really excited for uh, seeing this thing done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try and test fit it into the uh, housing here just to see how everything fits. All right, everything snaps in perfectly. That looks awesome. Played around with some wire routing back here. Uh, this is gonna need a lot of work to get this thing actually wired and functional. Look at that. That looks really cool. That's gonna look awesome inside the car. A lot of you are probably wondering why the instrument cluster is red. Uh, doesn't look particularly good, uh, but it will not be red in the finished product. I will be painting this probably, maybe wrapping it, but some of these angles are a little bit, uh, they'd be a little bit difficult to wrap it. Uh, but it's red because I had the most red filament and I did did not feel like ordering more. I'm trying to use up as much as the red filament uh, as I can because for what I use it for, don't use a ton of red uh, other than for just prototyping. But yeah, this is turning out to be a really cool project. Everything fits perfectly. I did a really good job measuring everything and uh, getting those tolerances just right. But yeah, this, I'm excited for this. So now that we have the 3D printed parts uh, fitted, uh, it's time to start thinking about wiring. And wiring for this should be pretty simple. Uh, I made this little really sloppy chart thing. Um, signals that we need and if it's on the cluster or not. In order to figure out how all of these signals are arranged on the cluster and what kind of signals they are, um, we could kind of look at this and test polarity of things. It does say what each component on these, uh, where it plugs in to the uh, harness, it does say what the signals are but it doesn't tell us what kind of signals they are. Uh, it just says where they go to. So I have here an original uh, Mazda Miata uh, service book from presumably a garage, like a Mazda garage. Um, and in here, there is the wiring for the instrument cluster. This will be crucial to uh, actually wiring this thing. Uh, it tells you where all of the uh, signals come from, says what kind of signal they are. For the fuel gauge, it tells you uh, what the uh, resistance it reads is. This is a great tool for any project on the Miata, and it will be, this project is no exception. And with the information from this book, I'm able to figure out exactly uh, which pins I need to wire to what. Um, so I'm thinking I'm probably gonna end up cutting out a large portion of this so I'm just left with the uh, harness connectors here. 
because that's really all that I need. None of this other wiring is going to be used here since most systems in this are going to be deleted or rerouted. So, yeah, if you're doing any sort of projects on your car, it's a good idea to have one of these. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start soldering to the traces on this little flex board on the back of the cluster. I'm going to start soldering to the traces that I have marked on here uh, and just extending wires off of them that I can then hook up to uh, what I need to hook up. In order to solder to these traces, there's a thin layer of uh, like plastic over them. I'm just going to scrape that away and it will reveal a nice copper color below. And that is what I can solder to. And there we go, there's one wire installed onto the flex board. These uh, super thin ones are kind of a pain in the butt to uh, solder to because it's easy to overheat them, but it's not too bad as long as you uh, pay attention to uh, what the solder's doing and what the soldering iron's doing. You don't want your soldering iron to be too hot, um, but it's very simple. There's one wire, a bunch of more wires that we need to do, um, but that's how you do them. All right, so with this mess of wiring here, I'm gonna leave this for today. Uh, I'm probably gonna end up taking epoxy and dabbing it on to all of the solder points and probably a couple other points just to hold the wires to the board so they don't peel off. Um, but I'll do that off camera. You guys don't need to see that. You guys, I'm sure, know how to use epoxy. So yeah, this project's turning out to be a lot of fun. Be sure to stay tuned for next time uh, when we finish the wiring, start installing the uh, rest of the gauges, and uh, see where it goes from there. But until then, I hope you all enjoyed. Be sure to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and I will see you all next time.